When I was 18 years old and I realized what being a real estate agent actually is, I was like, shit. <laughs> well, too late now. Hey, what's up? My name is Vayna. I'm a real estate agent here in Seattle, Washington. I started selling real estate when I was 18 years old, really started learning about the industry around 16 years old. I've found a lot of success and I really love the industry. So now I'm sharing what my experience has been like and the advice that I have for new real estate agents and people looking to get into the industry, whether it's investing, you're going to buy a house sometime in the future. Maybe you're just curious what real estate agents actually do. I'm your girl and I am super excited to share what I know. And in this video, I'm sharing what my expectations were when when I first became a real estate agent versus what the reality actually was. So thanks for tuning in, drop a like and subscribe and let's get into the video. So expectations versus reality. It's funny cause I don't script these videos. So I'm kind of just going off the top of my head. Honestly, I think the number one expectation that people have when they first get into real estate is get rich quick because we all know that real estate agents make a lot of commission. It looks easy. Like all you do is show houses and write contracts and take clients to dinner but it's really a bit more than that is what I learned. It's not selling sunset, it's not HGTV. Real estate is a lot of freaking work. <laughs> well, statistics tell us that the average real estate agent takes six months to cut a check. They don't get paid for six months once they get their license. And we also know that 80% of newly licensed agents actually drop out within six months. So we've got a bit of a failure rate, but I think this is just because it is really easy to get your license. And so many people think that by getting their license and going through that licensing course, they're going to learn how to sell real estate, which just isn't the case. Sorry to say the course really only teaches you how to pass a test. It doesn't teach you how to generate business, negotiate on behalf of clients doesn't even teach you how to write the contracts. Honestly, you have to get signed up with a brokerage either way. Once you get your license and they are the ones who are going to be responsible for training you in the beginning. But yeah, so without going off on a tangent, so many people think that the course is going to turn them into a million dollar producer, which it really just doesn't. The reality is there's a lot of self discipline involved. Working for yourself is not easy. There's no one really telling you what to do on a day to day. There are no set hours. You are directly responsible for keeping yourself accountable on your schedule and doing the things that are going to make you money. You can 100% make a lot of money in this industry, but on average, it takes a while. Definitely not more than four years for a bachelor's degree, but if you know me, you know my thoughts on college and that is a different video. So, so my expectation was that I would make money pretty quickly. For me, it took four months to get my first listing and get a paycheck. And at 18 years old with no bills to pay, still living with family. And I was really focused on learning and training and figuring out how to become a great agent. So the time was not really an issue for me, but it's important to know that as a new agent, you might not make money for two to six months. Second expectation was that generating business would be fairly easy. The way I learned how to generate business is I got on YouTube and I looked up Tom Ferry, number one training coach in the nation. This guy has over a thousand YouTube videos about selling real estate. So I just totally binged. I learned about all the different ways that you can generate business. There are literally hundreds of ways to get clients in real estate. You can farm a neighborhood, which means like dropping postcards, door knocking, hosting neighborhood events. You can obviously cold call, which is what I do. There's online ads, open houses. They teach you how to network all this stuff. There are lots of ways to generate business. And I went the cold calling route because I didn't really have anyone in my personal database who was really at the age of getting ready to buy a house. So I had to build a skill set around the lead generation source that I wanted to go after. And let me tell you, it was not easy. This is also a whole nother video about getting over your fear of rejection, but I was really scared to talk to people that I didn't know because I didn't want to get yelled at. I didn't want to get cussed out. I didn't want to even get hung up on, on the phone. But eventually I did realize that, you know, when you're on the phone, they don't know who you are. I don't know who they are. You can't even see each other when you're cold calling people. Of course, people are going to be annoyed that you're cold calling them. They don't want a phone call that they did not expect. Something like calling is a numbers game, but you know, I thought it was going to be not as hard as it was. Maybe actually, I don't know. Hmm. It honestly just took me a while to get comfortable on the phone. Calling four days a week for one hour each day it took me about two months to number one, get comfortable talking on the phone and not care when people weren't interested in what I was offering. And number two, get really comfortable with my script and know what to say. And so number one expectation, getting rich quick, I guess it depends on how you define quick, but it's really not true because of expectation number two, generating business is easy. But the thing is that once you get a hang of your lead generation and you're systemizing it, 
which really means you're getting it down to where you can reach out to more people and do less work and kind of have your leads coming in automatically. When you get really good at a lead generation system, then it kind of builds its own momentum and you can create a lot of business out of that one thing that you got really good at. So yeah, expectation number three. Oh, I wrote this one down. Getting leads makes everything easier. So this one's kind of funny because a lot of new agents will actually go pick a brokerage because they give them a lot of free leads. But here's the thing, if you're a new agent and you're getting you know, qualified buyers and sellers handed to you, if you don't know how to handle them, what to say to them, how to handle the transaction, those leads are useless because they're gonna go to someone else. Ideally, your brokerage will train you before they hand you the leads, but even if you're not totally qualified yet and you don't know what you're really doing with these leads, it's pointless. <laughs> And especially if you're taking a smaller commission split because the brokerage gives you these great free leads, depending on what you want to do in real estate, whether you're there to learn from a great team or make a lot of money, it just might not be the smartest thing to sign up with a brokerage, take a smaller pay because they're giving you these leads. You also might not know the quality of these leads. They could be very unqualified. They could be super qualified, which just means that they're motivated and financially qualified to buy or sell. And for me, I never got a single free lead. I had to work my ass off for every single client that I got but honestly by doing that and by generating my own business I learned how to connect with people and how to sell so as opposed to just having people handed to me I was able to develop that skill set of selling and negotiation to get people to work with me basically but yeah just because there's free leads doesn't mean it's easy that's kind of the moral of that story <laughs> expectation versus reality oh here's one <laughs> expectation when you go into real estate is that because you're working for yourself you can control your own schedule right well here's the funny part is that when you become a successful real estate agent and you're doing a lot of business you are going to be busy as hell you are going to be showing houses all day writing contracts dealing with clients having people to follow up with working on creating new business all of this stuff and i haven't even and i haven't mentioned taking care of yourself takes a lot of your day so i've mentioned before that my business is kind of seasonal not by like yearly seasons but just i'll have a few months of really 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 busy like go 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 every single day 16 hour days skipping meals not taking great care of myself because i'm working so hard and then i'll go anywhere from two weeks to two months where it's really slow i only have a couple clients going at a time but i kind of get to reset and eat regularly and exercise and do all the things that i should be doing so, but during these busy seasons, a typical day in the life is I get up, I go to the gym, I eat breakfast, and then I'll work in the office from like eight to 12, managing transactions, doing paperwork, negotiating contracts, training my team. And then I'll have to rush out and show like anywhere from four to eight houses in a day, get home really late, eat a late dinner, go to sleep, wake up and do it again. That's like a typical day in the life. I have some TikToks on it. Stay tuned for my day in the life here on my YouTube channel. But yeah, you get really freaking busy. That's the thing. And so when you're really busy, you don't get a lot of control over your schedule, especially when you're representing buyers and you have to make both of your schedules work in addition to the listings that you're showing. But if you're not so busy, then your time is your own. So <laughs> you kind of get to do what you want, but that is where you need to watch out for yourself and not get complacent because if you don't have much going on, then you have to go back to generating new business. You can't slack. Cause if you do, you're not gonna have a paycheck next month. It takes 30 days to get paid. So yes, your time is yours, but I'll just tell you now that when you're dealing with probably five plus clients at a time, especially active buyers, that's gonna be more work. It's gonna be significantly more time consuming. Then you really have to dial down on your schedule to fit everything in. Expectations in real estate. What are the expectations? Expectation, oh, well, I mean, I mean, not every expectation had to be wrong. So I thought I was gonna make a lot of money and I did. Oh, I can't say that, I cannot say that. Um, oh, here's one. I think a common expectation slash misconception about being real in real estate is that you don't really need to know how to run a business or you don't need to set goals or you don't need to have everything planned out or be super thorough with the business plan. But the reality is having a business plan and you can find templates online. Tom Ferry has a great business plan template. It basically just says, how many houses do you want to sell this year? And what are you going to do to sell all those houses? Um, it involves creating your daily schedule, writing down your goals, being really specific. And by doing this and having the mindset that you're running a business is going to set you up and help you reach those goals 
a lot more than if you were just playing by ear and not writing down the things you want to accomplish. So I was taught how to create a business plan from the jump and I truly think that is what kind of accelerated my growth and helped me get to where I want to be because I had a daily schedule of what I wanted to do every day. I followed it and then I reached my transaction goal. I did it again this year and I've already doubled the production I did last year. So I would highly recommend doing that basically. <laughs> but anyways, that pretty much wraps up the common misconceptions about real estate, what the expectations were versus what the reality actually was because it's hard to tell like what real estate agents really do all day you know why we have such a high failure rate what people don't know about real estate so i hope this video helped you and if it did i hope it's not too much trouble to leave a like and a subscribe and stay tuned for my upcoming videos follow my socials i love connecting with you guys on instagram facebook youtube TikTok. we're all here to create a better future for ourselves and get the life we want so i hope you stick around and i'll see you in the next video